All right. Luke 14, the parable of the Great Supper. That must be the Lord's timing as we're thinking about food prepared for when we put the windows in. Just what great food we can have. And I got to think more about that so I can make suggestions. Maybe we can take in. I know Corey's going to be wanting to be popping those windows on. What we have to do is take Corey and put him on the grill. Put him on the grill for part of that time. Grilling. <laughs> grilling like chicken and hamburger, maybe steaks and what else? Yeah. Well, he brought halibut from Alaska and grilled that. That was like the best fish I'd ever had. And I had a lot of good fish. I like fish. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great. Going to grill it. We'll just have to, like, okay, Corey's going to stop popping windows in. Go start grilling. This is a tremendous parable. And let's read through in Luke 14 and verses 15 through 25. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Uh, com commentary is kind of like they're not sure where that question came from. If it was just one of those, you know, how kids are, you're in class, and here the Lord has really been teaching them with his parable of those that were taking the, the best rooms and teaching them lowliness and... Um, Gave that really direct story to the host, to the host of the supper, about uh, when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and this man, this man asks this question or makes this makes this comment: "Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God," and. Whether it's just, it seems almost like he's saying, well, wouldn't the person be lucky that, you know, or blessed have God's favor if he ends up going to heaven? And the Lord Jesus tells this parable, making it clear that God calls everyone to his great supper. He wants everybody to be saved, to come to him, but people refuse him. It's not a matter of who's lucky enough to go to heaven. It's a matter of responding to God's call of salvation. And so this parable is about people refusing to come to God, refusing to come to the great supper. I wonder what, you know, what did they have in that great supper? You think of the prodigal son, how they took and killed the fat calf, and maybe this supper... Maybe this supper they had a couple calves on a, what, what, are, the, what are they, those things they crank around? What do they call those things? Huh? I don't know, cranking that big calf around there and man and basting it, you know, and just, just awesome. Have you ever been to one of those? It's like, the one I went to, they had all these dips of, uh, you rip a piece of meat off, cut a piece of meat off, and then they give you all these sauces, uh, and you dip that meat in there, and it's like, wow, it's just so great. Who wouldn't want to come? Salvation, salvation is so much greater than any supper. And this is a picture of, 
by the Lord, the Lord has provided for us, uh, poured love into, just poured his love into providing salvation for us, and people just don't want to come. Uh, if you think of a uh, mother working and slaving and fixing a big special meal and inviting all her family and and it's a labor of love. She she just wants them to be there, and then they can't come. When it says that the what does it say? The master of the house in verse twenty one, being angry, said to his servant, "Go out quickly into the streets." I think that he's angry like a mother would be when she calls. She calls all the kids and calls her husband. It's time to eat. Everything's ready. Come in here. Did your mother ever get mad when you didn't come when the food was ready? My mother would be like, well, we, we finally watched. How come you didn't come? I called you. I called you. Now, why didn't you come? And she'd give it to my father, too. Why didn't you come? Everything's cold now. Well, put a lot of work into that. And the Lord has done everything on the cross to provide for our salvation. And why don't people come to him? I said we're going to read down through this. So this man says, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God, and this parable the Lord tells is saying that people can come. They're called to come to God. They don't want to come. So then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. He sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. I was thinking as I read down through this, it's like, you don't have to call me twice. It's like, did you say food? Did you say supper? Say it's time to eat? This can wait. Too bad people weren't like that towards the Lord's great offer of salvation. Just like drop everything and going to go dine with the Lord. I'm going to go fellowship with I'm going to receive the Lord as my Savior, dine with him. But the first said, I bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. The servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. The parable also is, as the Lord sits at supper and the Pharisees there, and they'd been watching him, wanted to criticize him, and they reject him is obviously a parable to say they had rejected him. And it's come to the point where he had bidden the Jews to receive him as their savior. They rejected him. And the gospel was going to go out into the highways and hedges. It's going to go out to the Gentiles. It's going to reach way out to the corners of the earth. And it found you and me. And praise the Lord. We know the Lord Jesus as our Savior. So we want to look, as we look at this parable, Just we just want to look at two things 
We want to look at the indifferent people who would not come. And then we want to look at the obedient servant who would not give up. And the, obe the uh, indifferent people who would not come. And this all pictures they, they refuse to come to the Lord. They're not interested in the Lord. Uh, why wouldn't they come? Well, they had so many excuses. They all, with one consent, began to make excuse. And today, still, people have all kinds of excuses. It's just amazing. Um, why don't they just come out and say, I'm not interested. But they'll make excuses. And I always think of inviting a lady. Well, this has happened several times, um, but I just remember specifically a lady sitting in the hallway in her wheelchair. Obviously, nowhere to go. She's not going anywhere. Um, yeah, inviting her to come out to the service Monday night at the nursing home. So, you know, come down. It's just down the hall right here. We're having the, oh, I'm so busy. And you wonder if people, you know, they make excuses their whole life. And then when, I mean, she's not busy. We all know it. But right to her dying day, she'll make that excuse. Well, I'm so busy. No, she wasn't busy. She just wasn't, wasn't interested. So you see the excuses. It's the first one said, I bought a piece of ground. Are these good excuses or bad excuses? Well, you say, wow, any... Uh, anybody that refused to come to the Lord, uh, they must be bad excuses. Well, that's the way, because we're on this side. We've received the Lord, and we know there's no excuse that's any good to for somebody to, to refuse the Lord. But from their side, their, their point of view, they think this is a good excuse. I've got a good that's what people think. I've got a good excuse. No, nobody has a good excuse. Rejecting the Lord. And the first excuse here, the first man says, I bought a piece of ground and I must needs go and see it. People reject the Lord, refuse to come to the Lord for self, selfish, selfish interest. Self-interest. Well, I've got this going on. Really, you put yourself in that man's position. You ever, you ever bought a piece of property? Uh, we did one time. We bought a piece of property in Peru. And I just remember once we bought that, I just wanted to get there. I wanted to walk over the property and walk over the property and think about things and go through the house and that's the way people are. They're so interested in what they've got going on. They don't see what the Lord has done for them. And we know there's no good excuse, but you can see why people, people are uh, consumed with self self interest, then people are consumed with work. Work. This man said he. This man's got to go look over his piece of property. I'm sure he's thinking about the work that he wants to do to it. And another said, "I have bought five yoke of oxen." Wow. So you also see people make excuses because. Uh, business, or finances, money. I know I 
invited one man to church one time and he's well I've got to and I I mean you've heard this many well I've got to work on Sunday which he said in a very arrogant condescending way like you know you Christians you take off and you go to church but I have to work well You're going to stand before God someday. And the Lord laid his life down for you, and you couldn't even take and stop a little bit to go worship the Lord, find out about the love of the Lord, what he did on Calvary. But they just all with one consent make excuses. And the last man, he says... I have married a wife, and therefore he doesn't, so he's not so polite about things. Some people try to refuse, you know, when you're trying to tell them about the Lord, try to refuse politely, make excuses. This man just says, I've married a wife, and therefore I can't, I cannot come. Well, that makes no sense, because most people, Especially in Bible days, you know, most people grew up, got married, and many, many still received the Lord and followed the Lord. Uh, but people come up with whatever. And so we see, we see the indifferent people who would not come. And we know... It's no different today. The parable that the Lord told is exactly the way it is today. So, now we want to look at the obedient servant who would not give up. And we want to be that obedient servant who won't give up when... Um, People refuse and refuse to come to the Lord. Just keep going. The Bible says here in verse 17, it says, and he sent his servant. This servant never says any other servants joined him. This servant is all alone. In our story, he's all alone. And he just keeps going and going and going, obeying his master. He keeps inviting people to the supper. He's all alone. Sometimes you might feel like nobody else, nobody else is visiting or inviting or nobody else is doing this. Well, be an obedient servant and just uh, invite people to come to the Lord and uh, keep at it. This servant was all alone. He was really under a lot of pressure. He's under a lot of pressure because he says that this certain man sent his servant at supper time. And then he says, come for all things are now ready. It's ready right now. And... As obedient servants, we can't put off the Lord and say, well, just, you know, put it in the oven, keep it warm, because I'm not going right now. I'm not doing this right. I've got things going on. This servant must have just hopped to it. Obviously, that's the story. He went right out. He obeyed. And... Really, we need to be busy now for the Lord. Just keep at it. Keep going. Busy now. Then you could say this servant failed. At least, I mean, we might be better, wiser, much wiser to look at it like it wasn't his fault. He obeyed. He did what he was supposed to do. But if I was a servant... I would come back and like, 
I would be like, oh, I couldn't get anybody. Nobody would come. I'm a failure. That's my personality. I don't know about you. I tried so hard. I went. Nobody wants to come. I couldn't talk them into it. Nobody wants to listen to me. Well, this servant, you could say he, he could have felt like a failure, but he just kept obeying. He kept obeying. And we know that those people are responsible for, before God. This servant obeyed the Lord. He just kept going, even when it could have been easily perceived that he could have thought of himself as a failure. He was refused. He was put off. What does he do? He takes in. Verse 21. After he goes and, and the first three won't, they turn him down. They won't, they won't come. Verse 21. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. What's this in that song we like to sing? So little time. The harvest will be over. And there's a phrase in there that says that we will report. How does it say it? Re report our work to Jesus, Lord of Harvest. We just keep reporting to him. Keep telling the Lord what's going on. The Lord can give wisdom, direction. The Lord here says, okay, don't bother with them anymore. They've been invited. They've heard. Go out and cover some new territory. And that's still wise advice today. Uh, as far, well, I mean, you never want to give up on somebody, but you know the you've given the message, you tried. Don't get so that you can't try somebody else. That you can't go some you can't. You're so tied up with somebody that keeps rejecting, rejecting, rejecting. Uh, spread yourself out. Try other places. Uh, just keep keep getting the word out. Keep inviting people. And so. This servant came and reported his work to the Lord of Harvest, and then he just keeps, he keeps going. And because the master says, go quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. The first people obviously had money to buy five yoke of oxen. I mean, that guy is rich. The Lord loves rich and poor. The Lord says, we'll go out and get the poor people. Not just the poor people, but the crippled people and the blind people. Bring whoever you can bring. And the servant once again reports to the Lord, said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, yet there is room. And the Lord said, Unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. Compel, that is to urge, you know, to urge strongly. It's not to, you know, throw them over your back. And that's what those people involved, those of us involved in bus ministry, you get these temptations just to carry the kids on. You can't do that. <laughs> Uh, it says compel here. The same word is used that Jesus compelled his disciples to get into the ship. He strongly urged them that they would. And we need to strongly urge people graciously, kindly, but to strongly urge people to come to the Lord. So this servant just obeyed. He obeyed his master. He kept going and going.
Lord, help us to keep going and going. In light of that passage of Scripture tonight, as we pray, um, just want to pray for our bus ministry. And you have ups and downs. You have ups and downs. And uh, we have been faithful to visit, invite people. And right now, I mean, we're down. I guess we don't have the youth group at this point. That also helps to draw kids. But we just keep, keep, keep at it. Keep going. Keep praying. Keep working. Do what we're supposed to do. Obey the Lord. And the Lord will bless and bring it around. We'll find more kids, parents to bring in, bring to the Lord. So, 